This meeting is being recorded. Hello and welcome Hello, to Access Chat. Delighted, Delighted, to to Delighted to welcome Joseph Sheridan, Sheridan today. today. Joseph is, is part of ITV Signpost, which, which is an organization, organization which is, which is creating, creating programs, programs and involving, and involving people, people who are deaf, who are and, deaf disabled and disabled in the creation of, the programs, creation of programs for TV. For TV. So, 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 Joseph, welcome. Joseph, welcome. Delighted, delighted, delighted to have you with us. Can you tell us a little bit more about Signpost? Okay, yeah, by all means. So, Signpost is a department within ITV. We, we recruit 50% uh, deaf and disabled people. We provide on screen interpretation for programming. And we've also created something called Sign Stories for children who are deaf. It's around kind of education and access for deaf children who face language barriers. And there's an app there for two. We also make programs for we make programs for a company called BSL, BL, BSLBT, and they've approached us and funded us to make programs for them. Uh, and, and these are stories, for example, like Deaf Lives, and we've done quite a lot of deaf sport. This is an organization that, that makes programming for the BSL uh, community. And we also work for a lot of corporate clients, health boards, councils. So the range of work that we've done in terms of making broadcast media or creating visual media for people is, 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 is very broad. Excellent. That sounds, Excellent. That sounds really um, uh, exciting. Uh, Sorry, there's a bit of an echo here because uh, we know that you've got uh, an interpreter because um, so that you can get the sign language interpretation for us. I'm just explaining that for our audience. My bad for not doing so before. Um, so aside from the sort of the, the major broadcast clients, do you also sort of work with the community? Do you work with other tech companies as well? Um. I suppose, uh, I mean, ITV is, a, is, a, is obviously a really big company, so we, we do provide other services. In our, in our discussion, we probably don't work with other tech companies because we are a very big company. Uh, and it, without wanting to kind of blow our own trumpet, in terms of the quality of technology that we have and our access to technology, we're kind of market leading in many ways. So we provide a lot of that um, a lot of that technical expertise is already in house. And, and just to say, we provide other areas of accessibility too. We, we provide subtitling, we provide audio description. So, now it's your question, we don't, but um, it's, uh, yeah, we, we, we pretty much do it in house because we're big enough. I mean, I should, I should probably just say that, um, I mean, ITV is a company that is absolutely committed to the idea of diversity and signpost itself is a unique department within ITV because many deaf and disabled people have difficulties in terms of accessing employment. But as a department and as a company where we have a proven track record in terms of employing deaf and disabled people and, and demonstrating our commitment to diversity. Excellent. And I, I've, I've done a lot Just of a, work I've, I've previously work with. Work. Previously Another broadcaster um, that begins with a B rather than <laughs> rather than ITV, and I, I I think it's it's a common thing that 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 the broadcast media in the UK are genuinely inclusive and genuinely want to to work to include people with disabilities both in front of and behind camera. Um, I think what you're doing with Signpost is really really interesting. Um, I'm I'm very interested in in the the nuances of sign language because it's it's a it's a complex language and it's structured differently to um you know to to the spoken language and there's also um unlike captions it doesn't translate you know because you've got so many different things can you explain a little bit more about the the different types of sign language a bit about the the, the structure because it's it is quite it is quite different and I don't think people necessarily understand some of that. 
Yeah, no, I'm happy to, to do that. You're absolutely right. It's very different in terms of in terms of uh, spoken languages. Okay, I mean, if we think about for many uh, BSL users or sign language users, English is very much a second language, and, and BSL has its own structured grammar. It's, it incorporates things like facial expression. It can convey tone and it can convey accent in the way that spoken languages do. I mean, what we we have uh, i mean i suppose i would say that for 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 those of us that are working on screen we work from an english text very often whether it's a script or whether it's subtitling and the challenge for the on-screen presenters is to take that english text and change it into a visual language and present that in a way that provides access for uh, BSL users that are, or sign language users that are watching our TV programs. Uh, in many ways, it kind of operates in um, the same way that uh, uh, programs that are translated into other languages, except that it's, it's, it's working in a very visual medium. And I suppose it's for any interpreter working into a second language, the processing that's required to make the transitions from one language to another are very similar. The processes that we're engaged in when we're working on screen as BSL or sign language presenters. Well, welcome to well, the welcome program, to Joseph. The program, Joseph. We're, we're, we're really glad to have you here. And I, I would do want to say happy International Day of Women uh, or International Women's Day or the IWD, but got to do a shout out for the women. <laughs> but I, I live in the United States, Joseph, and we, we are definitely committed to captioning and I think we could do even more. But what I haven't seen is as much is our really big television networks really working with the community of people that are deaf and hard of hearing to really bring them in in innovative ways like it appears is happening in the UK. And I know you probably can't say why, but I, I find it interesting because we see such innovation coming from the UK from your community, um, from ITV, and also from BBC, as Neil had mentioned earlier. And it, I, I wish you could tell us the magic secret of how we could get our um, broadcast, broadcast systems in the United States to really understand the value that your community brings to the table. So, so pull out your magic out your wand magic and tell, wand us, how and tell us how to do it. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I had a magic wand, the magic wand that you refer to. I mean, I think, I think in America, the difficulty for you is the size. You know, you have however many states and you have however many more millions of people. We're relatively tiny in that sense. And I think the deaf community is probably slightly more coherent and slightly more contained. Uh, and, and I would say that Deaf people probably are much more concentrated in kind of six or seven key areas in the UK, whereas I think your deaf community is, is bigger, but it's also much more spread out. Um, I think the other thing to say is I know that I know that you're trying to develop um, uh, uh, this kind of more innovative and creative approach to programming over in America. I think that, I think again, size is is more difficult for you. Although you have you have you have legislation around disability, it, it's it's easier for us to come together and 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 find a sense of leadership. I think because we are smaller, uh, so I think that's a big part of the answer. Um, and. It's like, so for example, we, but we have produced science stories, which I mentioned to you earlier on, and we delivered that on our, on our app in ASL. And we had a couple of American uh, uh, ASL presenters have come over and done that for us. So we've done a little bit of that creativity on the other side of the pond. And I think and one I think real one blessing real about the blessing work, about I mean, there's so much that the blessings associated with the work, but that we, even though we haven't been able to do what you are doing, we can learn from what you're doing. And I think that that's important. And we, we have done a lot of other good stuff, but I just still don't see us doing as good of a job of including people with um, people from your community. I, I, I just don't see it. I often feel that your community is left out more than other parts of the community. And I think that's really a shame. And, and 
we are our, our, our media here in the United States have been trying to teach us um, society wise about the community, the, the deaf culture, the deaf community, the pride associated with it. And I think in some ways, a lot of people are starting to understand that, but I still see um, employers being very, very, very confused, thinking that they can't really hire people that are deaf because they're gonna have to have a sign language interpreter with them all the and not really understanding the advancements that we've made. And I would also say sometimes, there's a little bit of confusion of the infighting we see in all of the different disability groups, but also in your community between, I know one, one person made a comment, um, they were signing, and there was another woman that had cochlear implants, but she doesn't sign, and they're like, well, we can't support her because she doesn't sign. And I'm like, what? Come on, we are all part of the same community. So I, I was just wondering if you, could give us any wisdom. I'm asking you really hard societal questions. Sorry, Joseph, but you know, how do we do a better job with that too? I think I think the other thing to say that's very different in the UK, just going back to your original question, is that we have we have more employment because we have funding, we have central funding available to so deaf people in the environment so that deaf people can access funding to pay for interpreters or for note takers or for, and, and people with disabilities generally can so there's there's a kind of key funding issue here yeah so there are less barriers in, in that sense if, if in terms of paying for interpreters and and, and i think that 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 uh, provision access to work um, is based on an underlying kind of equalities agenda for us over here in the UK. I know you have it in America, but we have the money that kind of backs it up. That's an excellent That's point. An excellent we point. have not done we that, and done we that. need to do that. Yeah, and I think it is kind of a, it's a big issue. I mean, I, personally, I don't know what kind of uh, support in terms of financial support that deaf people working in America would get in terms of funding interpreters. I, mean, I don't know what you have, but we certainly have something concrete. I think. And it makes a big difference. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we it, don't it's really it's all, over the place. all over the place. But I but perceive, I perceive it. it's not much. And it's very, it's very hard on the individuals because they have so much to offer so much stuff for our workforce, society in whole, and we leave them out because they speak a different language than other people. Other people. We think it's too we hard. It's too hard. Yes, I, I think attitudes uh, are society's and, and the key on it. As, as you say, people think of it as a problem or as a difficulty, as a barrier. And there, there, I'm not saying that there are there aren't similar barriers over here, but I, I can certainly speak for ITV in terms of having a very clear idea that, that equality underpins everything that we do, and that you know we want deaf and disabled people and people from different communities, from the LGBT, LGBTQ plus community, we want to bring them in and, and give them access to employment opportunities, and and it's about it's about your core values, isn't it? It's about um, uh, valuing what people can bring to to the workforce. So, uh, Joseph, can you tell us about the, the work that ITV is doing in terms of recruitment? Uh, what initiatives you have, and how 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 does your HR department works in a way to, to make sure that the organization is inclusive? Is inclusive. Okay, so we we kind of have a couple of approaches in terms of recruitment. Um, I mean, certainly in terms of trying to get deaf people to apply. I mean, we were we we worked with most. I mean, I think I would say when it when it comes to job adverts and things like that, many deaf people will look at a job advert and see that as an automatic barrier, and not see that as a job that that they could potentially do. So when I talk about two ways of doing things, we do put our job descriptions together and our job adverts together in text, but we also make videos and 
uh, try and find creative ways. We make videos, BSL videos, or we make translations. We put those out to the deaf community. And as a consequence, we've had a lot more people apply for jobs. And the number of people that come from those different communities that we're employing and recruiting has significantly increased. And people, they don't, don't have to respond in terms of uh, job applications. They can either re re reply or apply to the job through text, or they can send us a video letter outlining their CV and they're interested in the job. So that, those are the two things that we kind of do around recruitment. Uh, my uh, my, uh, my uh, niece uh, is studying Portuguese sign language. Okay, and I'm I'm sure over the last couple of years the profession uh, is changing. With uh, how do you see technology impacting uh, the profession? Uh, do you do you mean in terms of uh, remote interpreting or VRS services? Is that the kind of thing you're thinking about, or are you thinking more about things being made more accessible? Because I think in terms of the technology, there are, there are a number of areas which are certainly making a, a big difference. No, um, uh, absolutely. The, no, we have you know a new uh, artificial intelligence, new ways of uh, you no. Know, you looking at uh, video and decoding no how, how is is there uh, anything in technology that can make your work easier and make it even more accessible than or, than the work that you are already doing um uh... I mean, I think the deaf community are certainly using a lot more of the technology than perhaps the human community are because we're using a visual language um, and we're using things like FaceTime or we're using Skype or we're using Google Hangouts a lot. I mean, there's certainly lots of software out there that deaf people are using and we're using text messaging a great deal too. And we're sending videos to one another. So in, in that sense, technology has certainly transformed deaf people's lives. So, uh, following on from that, um, there's a couple of technologies that I'm, I'm aware of. So, there are um, some that are actually trying to do automatic translation of sign, signing for sort of customer service stuff. And then there's also, um, I, I know there's a, a small startup in the UK called Signly that are allowing people to sort of take a picture of a QR code and then get sign language so so that you can um, have sort of signing when when needed because because one of the issues about signing is it you know the language isn't commonly uh, known and there aren't enough signers so, so this is not about putting signers out of work but it's how can we help put signing into places where it's needed, where where you can't have an interpreter on hand the whole time. So what else are you so seeing? Are you seeing? Yeah, I, I, I suppose if you're talking about avatars, I am not personally a huge fan of, of avatars. I can, it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a natural use of the language, and I don't think deaf people particularly rate to it. And the complexity of the expression that, that naturally deaf people use is very, very difficult to replicate in some kind of AI or some kind of, of avatar. I, you mentioned Signly, and I can see the value. Um, I, I know the company Signly over here, and I know the app that um, they're using QA cards to bring signed content up to people. Um, I, 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 and, and, I, and I certainly welcome aspects of that kind of technology. I am less a fan of trying to create AI that will generate signed languages. And is that and because is that you think because the quality think isn't good enough? Or, or is, there a, is there a sort of underlying ideological objection? I think I think it it doesn't seem at all natural, and I think the language, in terms of the the meaning and the language being there, there isn't the fluency and there isn't the 
the, the detail to it. It's, it's a, it feels like a very faltering representation of the language. And, it, and by virtue of, of sign language being visual, the, 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 the amount of expression that can be contained or can be expressed by an avatar is, is very limited. Thank you. I, Thank you. I, I just really I wanted, just to, really understand wanted to understand what it was, what that, it was, was that was that, that the, was the major the objection. Major so objection. I think. So I think. I I totally understand that the, the at the moment, the the technology isn't at, at a, a level of maturity where it can do all of that kind of stuff. However, I do think that a bit like with automatic captioning, which was terrible. Uh, a few years ago, we, not, we shouldn't write off the the potential for com, uh, for computers to learn and models to improve, because I think that in certain contexts, a bit like you put up with the robotic voice uh, at the checkout when you're in an, in a hurry and you you go to the self checkout, it might be it might have an application. It's annoying. But it enables you to do something rather than it being, you know, the 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 mode that you you wouldn't want to go to a meeting with a <laughs> with a supermarket self checkout. Yeah, uh, it, 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 I don't know. I maybe maybe I'm giving you a very personal view of this. I I suppose I. I look at the language and uh, of, of the community that I'm a part of and the richness of it, and I don't think maybe we have quite uh, we have quite um, we we've quite valued that enough. Uh, I think you know when you talk about uh, using avatars, it, I, I think for me we need to focus on getting this language a little bit more. Up, up front before we, we start to see representations of it that are very, very simplistic, because I think it's where the languages come from. It, 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 just, it, just, doesn't, it just doesn't work for me, I think is what Joe's saying. No, thank you, I understand. No, thank you. And I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to um, force this kind of stuff on anyone because that actually people's communication preferences are, are important and we need to respect that. Thinking about um how we can expand the 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 reach of signing if if we're not going to use uh tech, uh you know avatars how else do you think we can ex expand the reach and ensure that we are um enabling people that need signing to get access to it um and 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 I'm also curious about how we can tap into a pool of people internationally when you've got all of these different languages. Like, uh, am I right in thinking, for example, there are two different versions of sign language in Ireland, one for the girls and one for the boys. Um, and, and so you end up with this fragmentation. So when you're a small country like the UK, um, you know, how, do we, how do we deal with some of those issues to make sure that we are providing people with the with the services and the 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 means of communication that they need um, when they need it, do you have some suggestions? Have some suggestions. Uh, it, this this is a complex this is a complex kind of issue, isn't it? Um, I mean, I I I certainly think uh, in terms of signposting people to, to, to develop access for deaf people, or I think it's certainly about, it's about focusing on what deaf organizations can offer. Sorry, just a second. I mean, I, 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 do, I do appreciate your point, which is about that there isn't enough access to interpreting because there just aren't enough interpreters out there. Um, and there's clearly an issue for us in the UK in terms of there not being enough interpreters. 
it's, I, I know, I, 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 my feeling is, I, I'm aware that I think you're certainly better resourced in terms of interpreting cover over in the American, in America in terms of how the interpreters per head of the population. But in terms of your, your comment about Ireland, I mean, I, I, there isn't such a huge difference. There are variations in terms of dialect and there are international variants. In, in variations in terms of, uh, um, I, I, and when I think about the situation in Ireland, I, I don't see a difference between a gender difference. I would say that in the UK there are certainly dialect differences, but those dialect differences come down to about ten percent, probably, of the vocabulary. And if you know, you know, people from England and Scotland and Wales when and the deaf community is much more mobile these days, and we love to get to events where we, we have opportunities to get together. And, and deaf people are very used to this, are very able to kind of change their vocabulary use. And as I say, it really typically probably is 10% to enable them to communicate with one another you know, very, very readily, I would say. Uh, and, and I think the true is for ex also true when deaf people go to different sporting events, things like the Deaf Olympics, or they go to conferences and they come and they meet people who use different sign languages. Um, but we have something called international sign, which although it's not a language as, as such, is a vehicle whereby deaf people use their underlying similarities in the structures of their, lang their signed languages to enable them to communicate with one another. Uh, let let me tell a, a story, something that happened with me about uh, last year. I was at the uh, an event in Ireland with uh, with the deaf community, and they were playing uh, Christmas songs in sign language. So they were playing the songs, and there was the music. And then I took a video where you see them you no know, uh, uh, singing the song, and then I posted that same video on social media so if you are follow, if you are watching the video on social media you are able to see the sign language from 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 the group who is singing and you are able to listen to the music the music unfortunately uh that music has copyright and i was asked to pull out the video uh, from twitter and and I, I was trying to argue against that you know this is uh, is in some sense is fair use because uh, in other sense it's not so i just want to share the story I, I was a bit frustrated with that because i was not allowed then to continue to share that story that i was uh, you know uh, being able to to attend and so i was a bit frustrated with that yeah I, I, yeah I, I can see how you would be I know this whole thing about copyright is, is, is problematic and we have to be hugely careful of it. Um, mostly, uh, I mean, my experiences of people who are, certainly in terms of uh, the filming that we do, we, we have to be really, really careful about copyright issues. But personal, to people to, uh, recording or signing people's uh, informal interactions, we don't seem to have, and posting them on social media doesn't seem to be such a big issue for us over here. No, so um, I think uh, we, we're pretty much at the end of our, 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 our allotted time for our interview. But thank you very much because it's been it's been fascinating, and I, I'm looking forward to continuing the conversation with our wider community on on Twitter next week. It's going to be great. Yes, big applause. <laughs> um, and and we. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to uh, thank need to the, the, the people that support people us. That support. So Microlink, Barclays Access, My Clear Text, uh, for keeping us online and captioned and and helping bring the community t together. And and thank you for what you're doing through uh, Signpost as ITV. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. No, you're more than welcome. If people want to contact me or Adele and they need further information or want to carry on this conversation with us in another shape or form, please don't hesitate to do this. I'm happy to share clips of our work or talk to people about what we're doing. Um, and, and happy to post some of that on social media or on the Twitter account, which is, which is what you're using.